love you, Daddy. Do 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 do. You are my hero, and you're always my life. I love you, Daddy. Oh, Daddy. <laughs> You welcome, are. viewers. Welcome, welcome <laughs> to the Woman of God show. We are here again. We back. Happy Father's Day to all the fathers in the world. We celebrate you. Hallelujah. We welcome you today to the Woman of God show. And I'm Pastor Jessica, co-pastor of Jesus Nation Minister Ministry, with my husband, Pastor Stanley Jean. God bless everybody. Welcome, welcome, everybody. This is your girl, Minister Yemi C. Jumoye. Welcome to the Woman of God show. Wow, it's going to be an interesting show today. I am the founder of Dominion Power Ministry, a ministry that was ta that is targeted toward women and toward prayer. And I'm telling you, today we have an awesome guest and we're going to have a good show for you. Welcome. I want you to share as you join us today. It's going to be very interesting. You can see I'm smiling. It's going to be good. It's going to be a great show today. Are you ready? Join us. Let's talk about sex, baby. Let's okay, talk about you and me. Let's talk about sex, baby. Let's talk about you and me. I have me. this one. Hi. <laughs> today is going to be a very sexylicious show. And so if you're frigid, you need to watch this show. I am Evangelist Bibi, the catalyst for productivity. So if you're not pregnant yet, you're going to get pregnant. And oh promotion gosh. and enlargement and everything you need to enjoy. I'm the CEO of my Faith TV Network and Go Global Conferences. You are welcome to today's show. I am so excited because... Mm, 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 there's going to be a lot you're going to learn. You like my new home? The most expensive home in America. <laughs> 495 million. Uh, well, you can buy it. It's on auction block. But yes. I, can sit, but I can sit in the lobby and let you see it. Mm. One day, you come visit me. <laughs> that's, a that's a beautiful I'm coming. Don't worry. I'm coming. I know, I'm Mr. Yemisi. Will you join me by next week? Get a million dollar home. I am. I'm working toward this. I promise you. We need to be telling the real estate agents, Pastor Jessica. We need yeah. to be telling the real estate agents to come on, pay us to showcase their homes. Definitely. Pay us. We'll put their homes in our backdrop and we'll showcase it on the Woman of God show. Ta -da. Ta -da. <laughs> she has yeah. a Ta -da. staircase. Another Ta -da. million dollar home. Ta -da. Five million. <laughs> Okay, but let's pray. Okay, let's pray. Let's pray. Let's pray. Hallelujah. 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 Father God, we give you praise. We give you yes, thanks. Lord. Father God, you are so good. Yes, Father God, Lord. we thank you today for this amazing mm. day. Father God, today is the Father's Day. Father God, we just want to say that we love you. We are yes. nothing without you, Father God. Yes, Hallelujah. Yes. And we thank you for this wonderful show, Father God. Take all the glory, Father God. Take control. Yes. Father, speak yes. to us in a way that people can be blessed and set free, Father Amen. God. And receive Amen. the blessings that you meant to yes. give to your people, Father God, yes, today. Lord. In Lord. the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 To give us our marching orders. What are we to do now? Hallelujah. Well, woman of God, let's uh, let us take the time and then let us take the time to share the show. Yes. This is the time for sharing. Sharing is caring. And let's yes. share to all the platforms mm -hmm. and even start a watch party. All right. That's, and I'm invite your friends right to join. Okay. Yes. Where, where we this show is streaming live okay. on all pages as this will help others to view the show also so that they can also be blessed so please please viewers go ahead and share so we can have a great show today I can't find the women of god show page the women of god show page. yes you gotta go on the page i'm sharing right now on my page share share so go to yeah, the women of god page right now go to the women of god page and share there 
share we are. Share onto the groups. Share yeah, onto my personal to page. The... Share to yeah. my story. Mm -hmm. The Women of God show, we're talking about sex. Let's talk about sex today. Mm. <laughs> okay. The Women of God show 11. And we're having Dr. O, the sex doctor. She coming, she coming, she coming. <laughs> I remember the day that my children were asking, Mom, you're getting none and you're talking about sex. You know what? I had, I had to go take them to Dr. O. I said, it's not me. It's Dr. O that is having all the sex. Mm -hmm. Evangelist baby. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Sorry. <laughs> Post. Post. Okay. I wish sharing. Yeah. Sharing, we're sharing, we're sharing. Yeah, we're that's sharing. what I'm doing. I'm sharing. Sharing is okay. there. We're caring. Share to my page. Share yeah, to I'm, my groups. I'm, I'm doing it. There's uh, too many groups. There's watch. too many groups. I Sharing know we group are the guys. At least 100 shares today. At least. At least. Everybody. That's what I'm doing. I yeah. love you, Daddy. Yes. You are my hero. And you're yes, always doing. in my dreams. I okay, love now. you, Daddy. Oh, Daddy, you are my superstar. Okay. Come on, share, to, share, share to your okay. story. It says share to your story, so I'm sharing to my story too. Share to my story. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you'll see the picture of three of us together. Yeah. Keep editing. Okay. I've shared, I've shared, I've shared. Wow. Okay, let me let me give you this the, the question of today so you can be thinking about it while you are sharing. Mm. Can you share with us at least one or two fun memories of your father when you were growing up? Mm, who's who's gonna start? You're still sharing? Evangelist yeah. BB. I can remember my father's Italian. What's belt. your name? <laughs> Evangelist Bibi. What's my name? Evangelist Bibi. You know what? What happened was this. Okay, let me tell you. One of the best okay. memories you have Sorry. of your father, Evangelist Bibi. <laughs> let me tell you the gist. It's very short gist, not a long one. Mm -hmm. I'm so Can scared I remember right the now. shortest one? Okay. The shortest one. Okay, well, we were all girls. My father had only five girls. And as we were growing up, they always told us that the girls were nothing. He should go marry again and um, get boys, that girls are useless. So my father vowed that he was going to train all of us as girls and we we're going to stand up where men are and um, oh, man. we we're all going to be graduates so eventually i became an attorney uh my sister is, a, is now a professor the other one has a master's degree the other one could speak 17 languages and she graduated with um in a with a degree in languages anyway all of us became graduates my father did what he wanted to do, and he made sure we could stand anywhere. And that's why the fact that we're girls, he always told us, he said, they don't have two heads. You have the same head as they do. Just pursue it, and with God, you will make it. And today, I'm making it. I can stand anywhere in the world in front of any man, and I will mm -hmm. not feel disadvantaged. So I have only my one song that I'll sing. I <laughs> love you. Daddy, he died 20 years ago, oh. but he left in his will. He said, take care of my children, take care of my wife. Till today, he's still taking care of us from the grave. You yeah. are my hero. And we are all still going to church. We are set to the Lord Jesus Christ, and that is the legacy he left us. Then you're always in my dreams. I love you, Daddy. You are my soul. That's my own part of it. That's mm -hmm. so beautiful. I know, right? That's so beautiful. I didn't tell you about when he beat me with them um, koboko cane and with belts. Okay. Like, you said you want me to go make, make it sure. You already did. I'm not so, saying anymore. Pastor Jessica, your turn. <laughs> Seriously, it's my turn. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! Give us one start. memory of your daddy. One special memory okay. of your daddy. I got so many beautiful, beautiful memories from my dad. But I, I, I mean, I was thinking about you know, the um, the way he introduced me to um, to be an, an entrepreneur. He, I was six years old. 
I will never forget that day that, you know, when you go to school and all your friends, they have the best shoes, you know, the most expensive shoes. They travel, you know, at that time I, I live in Mexico. So my friends go to, you know, many countries and I would start saying that. So, you know, I want this and I want that. And he said, well, this is the way we're going to do. We're going to build businesses. So he gave me my first business and he taught me how to save money and how to reproduce and how to increase. And from that day, I have never stopped. Actually, uh, I'm always, you know, it's, I, I believe it's my, in my bloodline because my daughter is the same way. She's already thinking about a uh, retirement plan and saving plan and how to be a millionaire. And I said, well, you know, our generations are always going to be better than us. But one thing I'm always thank God for my dad is because he always encouraged me. He said one day, you have to choice to stay or keep going and, you know, stay strong. It's like I'm always hearing the voice of God through my dad. It's, it's just so amazing the way he speaks into my life, how blessed me. My mom always gives us a lot of wisdom, you know, and give us, you know, take us closer to God. But my dad always gives us that, you know, strength to keep going and, and, and have success in life. So I'm so, you, I, my dad is just so special for me. He He's amazing. And I love him so much. He's in Mexico. <laughs> dad, if you see me now. <laughs> so that's the reason I'm here. I'm alive. I, I, I mean, I'm just so, so, so thankful for my dad. He He's a amen. man. He's a genius. Amen. 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 Minister Yemisi. <laughs> wow, the spotlight is on me. Yes, wow. Yes, yes. Wow. Wow. I mean, <laughs> I no went to his that. I know. Yeah. I have so many memories, you know. Um, the one I mean, there's so many things, but I was just thinking, you know, it's just like a few months now that my father passed. Uh, so <laughs> I remember that this time last year, I was just celebrating his birthday, and then you know, in by November last year, he passed. But when I was growing up, my father was a disciplinary man. Oh my god. I thank God for the way he raised me because I don't know what I will have become. You know, I'm the first of, you know, of 11 children. So you could know that, that that's oh, the way you see goodness. me acting like a man. I am the first of 11. So, you know, I need to make sure that I, I do things right because he believed that if anything is wrong with me, everyone that are behind me are going to be wrong. So he always disciplined me, always talked to me. I mean, make sure that today I can speak right. I can stand tall. I am what I am today through God and through him because of the, the way he handled and trained, trained me. You know, uh, unfortunately, he passed last year, you know, November, and I still miss him. I was just looking at it today, you know, when everybody was celebrating their father. I said, last year. I celebrated this man. He was alive, you know. Uh, it's on 80 last year, April, and we went home to celebrate his birthday. Then a few months later, he passed. So um, I wish him, you know, every good thing wherever he is. in heaven, Daddy. <laughs> I don't know what they do in heaven. So I can't say I wish him happy birthday. Confess, how many Koboko did you take? That's what I said. When you, you know, a Nigerian man, people, every Nigerian that are watching, if your father is a disciplinarian, you know you can't count how many koboko. <laughs> if you guys don't know what koboko is, it's an us sweep that, that was we, that was child abuse. Uh, was, that's that's the, what you call belt, it now. The belt so was, was child abuse. Know, it's not a child abuse. It was discipline. <laughs> the kneeling down was child abuse. That, mm -mm. No, no, was do you know how many kneeling down? How many uh st stand up or stood up? The frog jumps. Huh? How many Anyone frog jumps? Anymore. I mean, the, I, I was I was a very you know unique <laughs> child. That's what I'm gonna say. So I get punished every time. <laughs> <laughs> we got jumpology every day. <laughs> I'm punished every day, every time. So, but I thank God for those trainings. You know, yeah, that right. is one of the things that made me to be who I am today. You know, because sometimes, you know, I look at my children. I say, you guys are just enjoying. I need yeah. one of you to have come through my father. Maybe you will say, <laughs> you will be better than, you know. There was, but, there hey. was one episode, I have to say this song. This one was what? so, I, owe it, I remember it so much. I was very yeah. naughty. I went outside to play when they said I shouldn't go out. So when I came back, he had his Italian belt waiting for me. Oh, oh my God. When he used that belt on me. I started running around, and then he was chasing me with the pen. 
<laughs> then I ran back to help him, and the belt broke. <laughs> and he said, you have broken my belt. <laughs> <laughs> oh my. my Italian belt. That's how I knew that good belts come from Italy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, uh, Italian Pastor, belt. Pastor Jessica, you know, maybe they don't do that in Mexico, but in, in Africa, in Nigeria, <laughs> I'm from Nigeria. Mo when we are younger, most of us, are, our parents were like that. I mean, <laughs> maybe two percent of 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 for parents in the older generation will not be their children. That's how we were trained. They believe that's how you can be better. You know, they will beat you. They will talk to you. If my, for my okay, one of the things about my dad, if my dad usually, you know, he was a bank manager. He worked for a cooperative bank while he was alive. One of the managers there, whoever is watching, that knows him, John Ola for work on very popular. He was there for almost 30 years. So, you know, when if my, my father go to bed early, so by seven, he will have, he will hit his dinner by six. He's always on time. He eat at 12, you know, seven o'clock, 12 o'clock. That's how I was raised on time. He's never gone anywhere late. Evangelist can say, I don't go anywhere late because that, that was how I was raised. You can't be late for what he will tell you why. So by seven o'clock, he's in his bed. So if you see my father sitting down on the couch oh. by eight o'clock, we know something is wrong. You know, the so every, is coming every, out. <laughs> let me tell you what we always do. Everybody be asking each other. Who did something? What did you do? You know, we start asking because we don't know. And he won't tell you who has offended him or who has done something. So we will all be like sneaking around the house, trying to figure out who. So if you should call any yeah. name, or <laughs> if you should call Yetine, all of us will run. Oh my God. Wow. I mean, nowadays I look at it, that was a child abuse. But in that generation, it wasn't a child abuse. It, it made us to be what we have today. You know, yeah. that's why we are raised better. We are better than the people that didn't come out, you know, that way. They didn't see it as a child abuse. It's just the way they want us to be better in, in the society. Who knows what? Maybe I could have been bad. Maybe I could have been anything. We were yeah. raised in the Lord, you know. We pray every day, every... I don't care if you go to bed at 3 o'clock. I know. I don't care if you go to bed at 3 o'clock in the morning. By 5 o'clock, my dad, we, he has a bell. Bang on. Who yeah, are you? Must wake up. <laughs> you must get up to pray. Did you, did, did, you, did, you ever put, did you ever put books in your in your pants so that when they beat you, they did uh, No, I didn't do that. See, you were bad. I didn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> I did that one day. Oh, oh my, my goodness. God. I got double. Because the moment <laughs> the bell was landed, instead of doing twice and you feel that pain in your butt, he just had to. <laughs> Oh my yeah, Jesus, said, what is that? Father. You put a book there. You put a book oh there. Oh my God. I didn't, I didn't do that. <laughs> anyway, to all our fathers, <laughs> we want to wish you happy Father's Day. We love you. <laughs> our husband, our even single ladies that are acting like a father and a mother, we want to show our appreciation to all that you are doing. Stay strong. You always get your reward. We are praying for you that you will reap to reap the fruit of your labor. Yes. May your life not be cut short yes. prematurely in the name of Jesus. You know, yes. I read something last night. I'm going to read it just briefly. In the book of Job, chapter 5, I think verse 26, it said you will go to your grave in a full age. That yes. will be everybody's portion. No, nobody's life will be cut short in the name of Jesus. And all the children that you are taking care of will take care of you in the name of Jesus. Yes. None of them will be rebellious. You will not cry or mourn over your children. We celebrate you, fathers. We pray that this time next here you will still be here with us we love you we love you and those ones that have lost father remember jesus and our father in heaven is the father of the fatherless stay blessed we love you that's a yes girl over to you take us into the show yes Amen. it's time to start our show today yes. is uh, gonna be interesting let me tell you interesting is the word <laughs> Woo! no do not go away do not go away <laughs> You all are in a very for inform inf uh, very um a lot of information today. Let me say it that way. It's gonna be beautiful. It's gonna be amazing, and it's gonna help you a lot. I can't yes. wait to hear this. So do not go away. Okay, our special guest today is the author of the best-selling book titled "Enjoying Sexual Bliss in Your Marriage." 
She is an ordained pastor, an experienced marriage counselor, a trained sexual therapist, and a health and wellness coach. Wow, 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 wow. Today we are going to have this author coming to us, and her name is Dr. Olubusola Olufemi, and she is fondly called Dr. O. Before I bring her on, because she's in the she's in the backstage, she's ready to come on. Let me read her resume that's on the back of her book. Um, Dr. Olubusola Olufemi is fondly called Dr. O by clients and friends, and she is married to the love of her life, Mr. Stephen Olufemi. Uh, we call him Mr. Stephen. And um, she's a mother of five children. She's a missionary originally from Nigeria. She has traveled all around the world, teaching and empowering women and youths especially. She started her journey as a certified pastoral counselor with a doctorate degree in Christian counseling in the year 2008. She is a certified life coach and a health coach. She has done extensive work in marriage counseling and therapy, sex therapy, that's why we call her sex doctor. <laughs> Juvenile delinquency, spiritual and inner healing. She is a consultant in women empowerment and youth development, as well as being a dynamic, bold, and engaging speaker with a drive and determination to uplift and inspire individuals to live their best lives. She is an ordained pastor. She's a pastor. And prophetess and a certified marriage mentor. And Simbis, mean, that Simbis means saving your marriage before it starts, facilitator. She's also a member of the American Association of Christian Counselors and the founder and president of Intimate Issues with Dr. O, I -I -W -D -O which was started in 2011 from her struggles, personal pain, experience, and the freedom of living an abusive marriage. Intimate Issues with Dr. O is a 5013C charitable organization with group members all around the world, ministering mostly to victims in Africa and Africans in diaspora. She's also the founder of Femfis Wellness and Audacious Women of Purpose. Dr. Olu Busola Olufemi is the author of the book, Enjoying Sexual Bliss in Your Marriage. This book gives spiritual and practical information to help married couples to enjoy a sweeter, stronger, and more passionate level of sexual intimacy in their marriage. The ultimate goal for Dr. Olu Busola is to build a strong sense of community to reconcile and impact and to develop both and empower both adults and youths to live a healthy life. Without much ado, let me bring on the sex doctor, Dr. Olubusola Olufemi. Wow, wow, wow. Come on, come on. 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 Come can you hear Hello. us? Hi, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. ma'am. Yes. Okay, yes. I'm here. Yeah, welcome to the Women of God show. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We've been talking about you behind your back. Okay. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's good things, right? I trust you. Good things. Okay, now that, let me throw the first question because we don't have time. We want to milk you of everything, everything, everything that you have. Did you buy your doctorate degree? Because you're too young to be a doctor. Mm -mm. Oh, my goodness. Mm -hmm. uh, when everybody's buying the doctorate degree. Oh, uh, goodness. I'm sorry. I have a little cold. <clears throat> I wish it's easy to just buy it like that. I know people buy it. I did not buy it. Actually, I worked for it. I don't know what it is with me. Everything I worked for like seriously worked for. I, I wish I get things on a platter of gold, but it's not been that way with me. Actually, with my ex-husband. Can we spot lighter? Oh, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. I was taken away by her beauty. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for reminding me. Um, it was, uh, it's been a journey. It's been a journey. I, I had my, I got my doctorate in 2008. Um, I started the journey in 2001. It was after I had my second baby, 2001. And my ex-husband, you know, as usual, he has this mouth. He can, he can say anything and and, <laughs> and whatever he feels like saying. So he was just insulting me uh, that very day. I don't know what happened, and he called me 
uh, good for nothing, beauty without brain, you know, blah, 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 blah. I cried myself to sleep that day. And, and I thought, I need to do something about that. I'm not stupid. I'm not a stupid person. So the following day, he had mentioned a school to me before, but I just thought, you know what? I, I was happy doing, being a mom and a, and a wife and doing my job. So I went to that school with the toddler and the one in the in, in the baby in the car seat. I got there and I said, I want to start school. She looked, the registrar looked at me like, with two babies, I said, don't worry, I'll get a babysitter. I just want to know what I should do. I need to enroll in school. It's an evening classes, adult school, missionaries, you know. And she gave me everything that I'm supposed to do. It was scary. I told her I don't have money, but I had the 150 for registration and that's what I did and that's how it started um started my bachelor's I finished in one year because I had an associate before I left Nigeria anyway I had an OND I did the evaluation so that's an associate in America so basically I could finish my uh first degree in two years, but I was so determined. I was really, really determined. It wasn't, wasn't easy. I finished in one year. And yeah. in the middle of that one year, I was doing the American Association of Counseling uh, Counselors courses as a, to become a pastoral counselor, you know? Yeah. And I did not know that finishing that, I already did half of my master's degree program. Wow. Yeah. So the registrar called me, I didn't, I mean, all this has been a struggle, struggle mm. to pay the tuition. I was looking for scholarships. I did not get scholarship. So the school decided to give me one like, mm. because I was about to drop out. And mm. they were like, no, you're too smart to drop out. You have a lot to do. So mm. we're going to pay your tuition. And they did pay my tuition. They paid everything all the way to you know, masters, I, I, I graduated my first degree with honors and they were like, you did so well, you need to continue. It was scary, but I continued, finished the masters with, with honors and on a platter of gold, they told me, you cannot just go like this. You have a lot to offer the world and we need to prepare you for the task ahead. Mm -hmm. At that time, I did not understand Mm -hmm. Now I do understand. It must have been God talking to them. It's a Christian university, so definitely that was God. And I was like, task, I wanted to prove to myself that I'm smart, mm -hmm. that I'm not a beauty without brain. That was my reason for going. Mm -hmm. And thank God I finished the first and the second no more. I couldn't do it because at that time, when I finished the master's, I was pregnant with the third one. So pregnant and going for a doctorate degree was just too much to handle. I don't know. The truth is, I don't know how I did it, but it's, I know it was God. So that was the story. So I worked eight years. I was in school for eight years for the doctorate degree. It's not an honorary. <laughs> I worked for it. <laughs> so that wow. was, we have every right to respect that doctor. Oh yes, yes. Mm -hmm. I, I I okay yes Pastor, I did. Pastor Jessica. Pastor Jessica, please fire your question quick. Number two. That's an amazing story, Doctor. Congratulations because it's very inspiring for many. You know they I want know. to go back to school and it's never too late. Even mm -hmm. you as a mom, and I love it. I have a doctor in the house, and I'm always I have respect for doctors because <laughs> it, it is the way to go. I mean, it is it is really a a, a price to pay. It That's is. good, Doctor O. Can you tell us about how and why you become a, a marriage counselor and how easy has this job been for you? Or how difficult, how easy? Um, easy how difficult. When you love your job, definitely it will be easy. I don't ever feel like I'm working. That's the truth. When I went to school, when, when I, that first day when the registrar asked me, what course would you like to do? Um, I just, it was just an easy, I want to be a counselor thing. I just said, I want to be a counselor. And first it was psychology, but I thought, I, I, I want, I don't want to be called a psychologist. 
I want to be called a counselor and it was just easy. It's easy for me to talk to people and it's easy for people to talk to me. And I thought, and what I was going through at that time in my marriage, I wish that I could pay somebody to cancel me. So I just thought, okay, either, either I make money from this or I do it free. I'm, I just want to help people. I want to be able to help people. So that was just an easy thing for me to decide. And so far, is it easy? Yeah, it's been easy. It's been really, really easy for me. Mm. Wow, thank you so much. I have a long list of questions, Dr. O. Are you ready for me? <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know me. You know me, Dr. O. I got to do that. That's yes. why they put me there. They know. They know. <laughs> it's me and you, Dr. Let's, o. <laughs> let's, let's go for it. Let's go for it. Okay, Dr. O. I am interested in you being a health and wellness, wellness coach. How did you start your health and wellness business? Fem, Femfeast Wellness? How did you start? That's my number one question. Okay, um, Femfist Wellness, the company has been um, registered since 2012. It's Femfist International. We just, me and my husband, we just, it's the name, actually it's our middle name. It's Femi and Fisayo. So we're just sitting down, crouching on the couch and we're like, okay, we need to register a company. What do we call it? Okay, let's see. So we were just wrapping <laughs> and wrapping and wrapping. And <laughs> Femfist, you're Femi and Fisayo. Let's, Put the two together, so that's how we register Femfis. But it it was big scale selling stuff, export to Nigeria and stuff. So three years ago, I was sick. I was seriously sick, like bedridden for like six months, and mm -hmm. no medication was able to help me. I had a cardiologist, I had a neurologist, I had all these specialists treating me, and all this medication. I wasn't becoming better. It was doing more damages. So my sister said, I know she had introduced some herbs to me before, some herbal products. So when she called, you know, just praying and running up and down, going through the mountain and everything. So she said, you know what, since those medications are not working because a medication that is supposed to make me sleep for eight hours, I will wake up in two hours and in pain again. I mean, the most, the most terrible time. So she said, why don't you try the herbal product that I sent to you? So I tried it and I was, it was working. It was beginning to work. So I went to my neurologist one day and he was telling me I have to do surgery, blah, blah, blah. And immediately my spirit just rejected that surgery because it, it was a 50-50 kind of, it can work or it may not work. And if it doesn't work, it may even do some more damages. So I just was on my bed watching some advert on TV or on Facebook. I don't know how I got to know about this school so I enrolled, just wanted to be able to help myself. So I thought, okay, the money is a lot of money. I mean, talking about $10,000 certification. I said, I don't care, I'm gonna do it. Just thinking that I wanted to help myself. So that was how I enrolled in school, when to become uh, on my bed. <laughs> <laughs> oh my bed, it was an online classes, so it was easy for me to do that right on my bed. So I finished that, and one of the things we were supposed to do is for you to be able to write your own programs and stuff like that. So I just wanted to make a plan that could work for me uh, to lose weight, and also, um, I just wrote that program for myself. It's a three month program that I have to do. So that's what I did. That's what I did and it worked for me. I was able to walk again and I was able to, I mean, I felt better. I felt better. It was really, really, uh, that's how it started. So when it worked for me, I just thought, you know what? Femfis can have a wellness part of it. When I got that certification, it was just an easy thing for me. Like I wanted to help people. Actually, I was doing it free. Everyone that I helped in my first year was free. I still do free, but you know what? I need to pay my bills now. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes, you can say that again. Mm -hmm. Yes, Dr. O, you can say that again. <laughs> my other my number two question, you just answered the question because I was oh. going to ask you, you know, about the apps and the, you know, the yeah. unique appetite that you do by putting them to, 
together, you know, especially doing, because I, I watch you a lot on Facebook. I remember that during the COVID-19, you were talking, advertising the apps, you know, for people, you know, can you just tell us about, about that, you know, if they actually, people, I know some people that use, like you said on your Facebook page, some people that had, um, or got infected with COVID-19 actually take some of your apps and they got, can you explain that to viewers, please? Yeah, um, it's been a journey with the uh, wellness thing uh, because it really, really worked for me. I went back to school again to be an herbalist. So I'm, uh, I got some certification. I'm still back in school now, still because I realize, especially Christians, we believe using all these herbs, the fetish, uh, voodoo and stuff like that because of the meat that has been put in our head, all these pastors. Yes, I believe I'm a Christian, I'm a pastor, I'm, a, I'm an ordained pastor, I'm an ordained prophetess. So I just wanted to know what is behind all this. So I went into studying, studying these herbs by myself. Uh, so it's, I was just in the, at the peak of my studies when COVID started. So I just started praying and started looking into stuff. I have, I have professors that are very, very good. Actually, the, the treatment that I use for the COVID is from one of my professors. He just said, I don't want to hear that any of my students is sick with COVID. So he gave us the, the combination. And I just throw it out there on Facebook, like, well, either you believe it or not, it's not gonna kill you, try it. So everybody was like, you need to help me get it, stuff like that. Practically, that's how I just started, you know, it worked for some people when, and I was, when I was sure that this works for one person because the husband was almost dead uh, mm -hmm. in, in Maryland. So I said, okay, you're the first person that I'm gonna give this to but I pray that it works for you. And it worked for her, uh, for him. He was healed. And that's, I mean, you get confident with, uh, with a result like that. And it, it really, really helped. I mean, I, I lost count of how many people were treated either for prevention or for real COVID treatment. They all herbs, you know, God created these herbs for us. So now at Femfis Wellness, we practically treat every illness helmet with herbs and i make my own capsules so whichever way you want it either as powder as liquid or you know for a lot of people who say oh it's too um, bitter and stuff like yes, that yes it's too bitter it's, it's too bitter, bitter. <laughs> it's bitter oh my goodness so, oh, let me go to nigeria let me go to nigeria it's too bitter it's bitter <laughs> it's too bitter Mm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you taste this thing it's, some, it's worse than quinine and it is uh, <laughs> some uh it's not everything but <laughs> well that's you not that's everything how I, actually because of my kids because at that time it was really really serious and i really want them to be able to drink it or heat it or somehow so i started making them into powders and put them in in capsules so anyone can take them so it's i mean it's life-saving 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 so thank you i respect so our herbs more thank you time. so much thank you thank you i so can much. attest um, <laughs> um, I dress sizes slimmer the dress that could not fit me before. She gave me the weight loss and the fat absorber. And I'm already two dress sizes uh, slimmer. So when Ooh. I'm looking, I can contest for most beautiful. Oh, yes. oh my God. Where? Mm -hmm. Which country? Uh, <laughs> Atlanta. <laughs> I need it too. Yes. No, Pastor Jessica, Pastor you Jessica. just Pastor right. Jessica. Pastor you Jessica. Need just right. I need you know what? Well, don't even stop, Pastor Jessica. No. <laughs> You don't need it. You're fine. Look at Pastor you. Jessica has everything. She don't need it. Not you don't need stomach. it. <laughs> <laughs> there are some that you can use for stomach too. But anyway, um, back to what we're saying. Can you go ahead, um, Evangelist? Um, okay. okay, well, let, let's just take a short break right now. Short break, short break, short break. I want to take her, her, the advert for her book mm -hmm. so that we can... Um, let me see. We can see the book. Where did I put the book? The book, the book, the book. Ouch. Have I lost the book? 
<laughs> we don't know. <laughs> you tell us. <laughs> I've lost the book. I've lost the book. Oh my goodness. The book was right there. Okay, let me see. Let me see where it is. I'm supposed to play her book so that yeah. we can see. We can see that book is very nice, it says. <laughs> oh, I can't find it. Can you okay. just played it before we started? Yes, I did. And mm -hmm. I like that. Oh, there is it. There is it. There is it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, come on. Sex isn't overrated. You just need to do it right. Sex is God's special gift for every married couple. Yet, not many marriages are enjoying its pleasures and possibilities because of wrong attitudes, beliefs, and approaches. Regardless of how things have been between you and your spouse in the bedroom, you're both about to be fired up for a sweeter, stronger, and more passionate level of sexual intimacy. I am Olubu Sola Ulufemi. I am a marital coach, and I have written a book to help your bedroom ministry. In this book, you will discover God's beautiful purpose for creating sex, multi-dimensional benefits of frequent lovemaking, proven strategies for building and strengthening intimacy in your home, powerful insights on the differences between male and female sexualities, creative techniques for enjoying mind-blowing sex, sizzling secrets, for spicing up your sex life, real life sexual challenges of married couples and their solutions. You can get the book at www.amazon.com slash gp1952098041. If you want it in Nigeria, call Lola at 0806 051 9109 or Tommy on 0802 914 3524. Let's talk about sex, baby. The part <laughs> I like about this is mind-blowing sex. Oh, come on now. Talk to us about that, mama. Hallelujah. Oh, my God. <laughs> of course. <laughs> you go you from mind-blowing. Thank you, Lord. How do you go that from mind-blowing to hallelujah? Oh my God. It, 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 has, to, it, it has to be hallelujah. Mind blowing. Say, oh, oh, yeah. Thank you for wisdom. <laughs> oh my God, these people are right here. <laughs> okay, let me. Uh, oh my goodness. Okay, who's asking the next question? That sizzling, sizzling sex and mind blowing sex, that thing has just. Pastor Jessica. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Second okay. session. Mm hmm. I'm gonna try to be serious. Okay? <laughs> I'm gonna try to be serious. Okay, be serious. Okay. Mind blowing sex. Woo! Doctor O, where do you write this book? I can't yes. wait to have it. How do you enjoy sexual bliss in your marriage? Tell us who should uh, should buy this book and read it. Okay. Okay. Um, this book, I keep telling people, I did not just sit down in two months to write a book. Um, right from chapter one, actually I was reading the chapter one. I wrote the chapter one 10 years ago. This is a 10 years old book. Um, I just got somebody to collate all my write-ups um, and they did. <clears throat> when I started my group on Facebook 10, nine years ago, the intimate issues with Dr. O, I used to just post on my own personal wall. You know, I was just praying that day and God said, you know what, there are people out there that they need you, need me for what? I mean, it's what I was going through divorce and I needed a counselor. I just could not afford one. <laughs> so why should I go start a group and be helping people? Who is going to help me? And God said, just trust me. And that's what I did. And sincerely, helping people has really, really helped me. So it's been a long journey of just trying to help people. One thing that we do not talk about a lot that we should be talking about is sex, especially as Christians. And if we look at it, this is one thing, one thing. I'm not saying the whole thing, but this is one of the things that is 
killing the marriage. Sex is 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 a monster that is killing marriages, especially Christian marriages, because we don't talk about it, we don't feel it. If you don't feel it, you can't have a great sex. It's if you if you're not free with sex, you cannot have it great. You have to be free in your thinking. You have to be free in talking about it. Um, sometimes when I'm counseling husband and wife, they can't even talk about sex. It's just about panel, turn off the light, let's do it kind of a thing that most people do. You need to be able to sit down, talk about it, what you want, how you want, ask for it. Women, we're suffering. And that's why a lot of people are cheating. If you cannot be free with your husband, you know, you should be able to be free to talk about what you want. Um, <laughs> just fantasize. Most people just fantasize. You're thinking in your head, this is what I want. This is how I should do it. And that's why people watch porn, you know? What's the essence of watching porn when you can't do it? Or when you watch it and then you expect to do that? No, they are on drugs. That's their own job. That's their <laughs> job. You cannot function like that. So I think it is very, very important for every pastor. It's not about coming to church every Sunday and talking about sex. We need to be able to have time for family in our churches. And we, we need to be able to talk about marriage. We need to be able to talk about sex in marriage. It's killing. It is it's destroying mm -hmm. homes, you know, because the husband is not having a great sex with madam. Hey, that's a side chick by the side and sometimes this is very strange thing but it, i when i'm counseling men it's like ah i can't treat my wife like that you don't want to have great sex with your wife but you think you can do certain things to a side chick are you getting my point yeah. those yeah. things you're doing with a side chick, the chick you can teach your wife your wife or those things you're fantasizing about, you can talk to your spouse, like, let's try it. That's what I do. Let's try it. I don't just think. When I think it, I want to do it. If you don't like it, it's okay. But we should be able to explore. We need to be able to try things. We need to be able to, to be free with sex. That's how to have it, have it great. Okay, Dr. O, thank you, Dr. O. <laughs> okay, Dr. O. Let's okay, Dr. O, what about, my, this is my question, what about couples that are having sexual um, challenges due to frigidity, you know, they're just so, you know, they're tight, uh -huh. <laughs> all because of head challenges and erectile, you know, dysfunction, how can they still enjoy sexual bliss with these challenges? There is nothing without solution. And erectile dysfunction is just one piece of cake. Of, I mean, the, the, the easiest, one of the easiest things that I personally treat. People think, oh, it, it can never be, okay. it can be. It's a matter of, I always set uh, three months ago for every treatment. If you want to, to be okay, like, I call it total transformation. If you want to have a total transformation, don't just use something for one month. So I have my plans for three months at least. Erectile dysfunction can be treated. Number one, if you if you some of these medications, like a man that is going that has uh, high blood pressure, diabetes, or uh, if you are on medication for these are two common things. Definitely, if you don't have erectile dysfunction now, you may have it in the nearest future. You may, I'm not saying 100%, but most men, especially that are on one kind of medication, because you even see on some of this medication, they will, it's one of the side effects of the medication. So you think, oh, I'm a horse, I, I'm very, very okay, I'm a sexual, whatever, superman. When you get on medication, be expecting something. It will affect or may affect, but I mean, there's solution to everything. That's why I'm screaming on Facebook to people, switch to harbor, use herbs. Some of us, we grew up on that. Our parents used to feed us with agbo herbs, first thing in the morning, last thing at night. That was how we could grow up to be this healthy. Then we started hitting junks, you know, my urban migration and everything came into our lives. Um, growing up, nobody in my family worked two jobs or work night jobs. Now you work two jobs, you work night jobs. Our life has been altered with, with lifestyles 
and it's affecting our health. The only way to get better is natural. That's the only way. Go natural. Erectile dysfunction, yeah, it can be cured. Within uh, uh, three months, let's just say three months maximum, but by three months, you should be getting well. You should be okay on your way to being okay. So how do you deal with frigidity? I just talked about freedom. Mm -hmm. You need to be free. Some of us, we grow up with, oh, sex is bad. Sex mm -hmm. is evil. Mm -hmm. Sex is essentially women. So yeah. some of us grew up being rigid. You don't, you have never enjoyed sex. You, you just think it's an obligation. It's a duty that you must fulfill. If you see sex as a duty that you must fulfill, that's no way you will enjoy it. So I don't know how you grow up. I don't know what has been said to you you need to explore and begin to enjoy yourself. Some of us, we don't even know our body parts. I remember my first class in school, the uh, sex therapy, the professor said, they are, I mean, I went to a Christian school, the, and it was, it was a man. He said, when you get home, you women, when you get home, go, do you even know how you look? Your clitoris, you know how, do you know how that looks? Go and get a mirror and just check on that, that, on, on that day. Explore yourself, know how you are, see who you are. I went home and got a mirror like, okay, let me see. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, because at that time, when you talk about free, I hated sex. I hated sex. Mm -hmm. And we, there are a lot of reasons why women, especially, we hate sex. Um, uh, childhood sex abuse, um, yes. growing up in a domestic violence home, yeah. um, being raped a whole bunch of things. And then some of us, we were um, what you, uh, circumcised. Yes. You know, when you're circumcised as a woman, they already cut half of your clitoris. They cut half of that. You know, that's a selfish thing. Anyway, that's another topic entirely. You know, cutting that, why? Why must you just punish somebody because you don't want them to be promiscuous? That's, I think that was the reason they started doing that. Yeah, that was the reason that they gave. They, yeah. the that you, they don't want you to be promiscuous. That's, that's a selfish thing to do. So that is another thing, you know? So growing up and things that has been, that has happened to you is some of the reason that is affecting us being rigid and frigid and you don't even, I mean, I, women call me and some men too doctor i don't like sex jerry you don't like sex the first time a man called me and said he doesn't like sex, i said what i know i always deal with women telling me i don't like sex this and that boy a man but seriously some men and then some grew up loving sex and then they became six erectile dysfunction and i had a couple like <laughs> the wife thought the man is cheating on her that's why they've not been having sex because they used to have great sex now she has to be the one begging him and then it's like okay went from being a powerhouse to two minutes like ooh, premature ejaculation and she thought it's cheating so i said okay let me talk to your husband without you being there. So I talked to this one, I said, Dr. Emma Dallon, don't mind her. She doesn't know what I'm going through. I don't even know what I am going through. I just know that I'm not normal again. This is not me. Something is happening. So we, I just started asking him questions. And the first thing is when you tell me, oh, I used to be this and, and I'm not that any longer. Are you on any medication? That is my first question. Because if you were good or great and now you're poor, or you don't even want to hear about it, something has happened to you. Mm -hmm. If you're not sick, you probably, you're on one medication or the other. And then men with prostate, one out of, one out of six men have or will have prostate cancer or enlarged prostate. Well, that's a, that's... It's very hard for a man who has erectile dysfunction. I found it's hard for them to confess it to their wives. Mm. They'd rather say they're going on mountain top for 90 days, four times a year. <laughs> and he's always on retreat, and uh, you are at home waiting for the, him to come down from the mountain top, and the year passes by. So it's very how can men talk to their wives mm. when they're going through such situation? Yes. I said um, you can have great sex with freedom. Either something is wrong or something you need to be able to talk. That's does the only way communication you communication, cannot survive a marriage without good communication yes you know you just call her she's your wife 
Even mm. if it's a girlfriend, I mean, if it's a girlfriend now, you may think, oh, she will run away. Yeah. You're married to this person. Why can't you sit down and say, <laughs> madam, something is wrong with me. <laughs> we have problem. We, we have, have problem. problem. <laughs> I <think a> problem. <laughs> like, we have problem. We have I'm, problem, that's it. Mm. Seriously, that's just this mm -hmm. only thing. Even if you're treating yourself behind, let her know. It will save yes. you headaches. Mm -hmm. It will mm. bring peace because she knows what you're going through. She will be able to That's help true. you. If you mm. don't tell your wife, you're just running up and down. And you're transferred mm. to Shokoto today. You're transferred to Chicago tomorrow. Some men will actually look for work outside of their uh, uh, mm. environment just to be able to run away from, from, from their wives. From their wives. So mm. it's add down. It's not like it's never heard of. It's common. I mean... I did uh, a show on erectile dysfunction. Um, I think it was last year. I did. It was actually fertility that I was treating. So I said I was going to treat fertility for one week. So in between, the, the, I just did erectile dysfunction. I was blown away at the at, at the many men that called, sent messages. I was scared. Actually, like what people are going through this this much or this many, mm. and. Mm. A lot of them, a lot of them did not tell their wives what they were going through. Mm. A lot of them. So why would you not tell your wife what is going on than you running around, you know? You I know, mean, um, doctor, you, you're cheating on them. That's yeah, they, yeah, you know, people, especially from back home, from Africa, have been told that don't tell your wife's secret. You, I mean, I'm talking to men. They have been trained, you know, by their parents that mm -hmm. you don't tell a woman everything. You understand? So some of them, that is the reason why they don't tell their wife. They prefer to go outside. But guess what? They will tell their girlfriends, their side chick, yeah. what is going on with them, but yeah. they will not tell the wife until when it's turned to, you know, a huge and huge problem. problem. Then the I have to stop this show here now. <laughs> we have just five more minutes for the show. But I'm going to wow. say this. So, oh, Dr. O, Dr. Wow. Dr. We haven't even scratched the surface at oh, all. I want to ask us so many questions. Oh, we haven't even scratched oh, the surface at all on this sex issue. Ah, how to have mind-blowing sex and the sizzling... Oh, my goodness. Yeah, okay. she, she can answer that in two minutes. Can you answer that question in two uh, minutes? She, can she? Okay. Try okay. Doctor, how can you answer Doctor, that question? How, how do, can how we do have, have mind blowing sex? Oh, <laughs> even, even you <laughs> ask, you <laughs> already <laughs> having it. Just hey, hey, hey. <laughs> she's already having it. Oh, my goodness, I don't know what to do with that woman right there. <laughs> oh, my goodness, come on, you know also, what? Yes, <laughs> carry your sister. Come on, did it be me? <laughs> Sex yeah. is the fiber of any good relationship. Say it, mama. Say it, mama. I mean, however, spirit coco you may call yourself. If it's not great, I mean, it, it, I'm going to say it again. Freedom. Be free with each other. There's no style you want to practice. There's no practical or whatever you want to do. You have to be free with each other. Sit each other down. Okay, what is going on? How can we make this better? Try things out, you know? Okay, um, there are so many styles. I mean, in counseling, sometimes it may be funny, but these are people's issues. And she only allowed me to do missionary style. Doctor, oh, can you tell her that we can do other style? Of course. One thing, people will, oh, we, let's go watch porn. I don't watch porn. I, I discourage people from watching porn don't go and be watching porn thinking you want to do what they are doing you cannot do it you cannot keep up with that that is their own profession you don't you don't you don't um, make porn your model of sex in your mm -hmm. own marriage you have your own model you create your own model by being free with each other okay aduke what do you like tell women speak speak Ask for what you want. I don't need to wait for my husband to say, okay, let's have sex. When I'm honey, when when, when I want him, I tell oh, him. Pastor, Pastor, honey. Evangelist. <laughs> I know, I told you carry this woman. I ask, I tell him. I'll be texting him at work like, 
I hope you're not working late today. I'll be texting him like, what do you want to eat today? Like uh, anything. No, I don't have anything on my menu. What exactly <laughs> do you want to eat? Because I want you to eat what you like, or because I want you to, I mean, I say it raw. In, I don't speak English when I'm talking about sex with my husband. So can you tell us the language you speak? You don't speak English. You like, speak English. I tell him, Mufed do it. Oh, okay. Oh, no. oh, no. Oh, 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 Mom. You said say it the way oh, I'm saying it. I didn't know you were going to say that. Of course. Of course. Of course. I want you. How do you say that in Spanish? Tonight is tonight. I want you. Hoy es la noche. Vamos. It sounds really, really nice. When you speak your oh, language, <laughs> when you speak your language, it sounds really, really nice. So say it the way you understand in your mother's tongue, the language that you understand. You know, play with each other. Or as sex, there's no I need that. You. Explore each other's you body. Need play me. with each other's <laughs> body parts. Talk to each other. Have good communication. These things, you don't just push a woman yeah. on the bed and climb on top of her. That, that is absolute nonsense. She's Ooh. just thinking in her head, just finish and get up. I'm oh. telling you, that's the way most yeah, people have said. That's, cool. that's mind blowing. Up and get this up. is mind blowing. So, mm -hmm. so that's why a lot of women likes they, they 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 want the two minutes man anyway because it's like mm. just hurry up and get up and get up yeah that's true mm. are you getting my point so you need to communicate you need to speak this is when i'm thinking something in my head i'm saying it out i'm telling you and even during sex communicate okay i want it like that no ah that I, one woman called one day said doctor oh, i ate sex do you know why she ate sex because the way her husband sucks her breast she doesn't <laughs> <know. laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 yes no, no, and i said no, no, and i said no, okay no, why didn't you no, talk no, to him about it he said no, oh, am i supposed to talk to us yeah somebody is doing something to you you don't like it tell him just show him Okay, put your lips here. Put your tongue there. Don't use your mouth. Uh, don't you use your teeth. Your Tell teeth him how he should do it. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. if you don't like it, say no, 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 no. Communicate. Let him know what you're feeling, how you're feeling it, how to do it. It will help you. It will help him. I said, just go practice that. She came back. The, the next time she called me, he said, Dr. Oh, eh? it was so easy. I said, yeah, because you told him what you want and how to do it let your wife know what you want let your husband know how to do it how to have sex with you it's as simple as that communicate and in the act of love making yes i like it no i don't want it like that yes i'm enjoying that let him know communicate that's how to have great sex like just sleeping there like a log of wood he jumps in and jumps out is that life no that is not the essence of love making the essence of love making is for you to enjoy it it does some good things in your body trust me it's healthy <laughs> holy also... can, we speak in, can we speak in tongues when you're having sex Oh, oh yes, my God! Now, well, you, you, are, you speak in whatever you're... tongue you want to speak. You speak in whatever <laughs> language you want to speak. <laughs> oh, you you can speak in tongues when you can you speak Swahili. Really. You can you speak <laughs> whatever language. That's <laughs> like okay, you get in it. It's getting there. Just speak. Just oh, just. Oh my goodness! Oh, you're that's getting that's to that's Jerusalem. That's that's already that's getting that's to that's Jerusalem. That's you are the king of heaven in Jerusalem. I want to add to what you just said, men that are watching. You know, when your wife, I'm talking about to men now, when your wife is telling you, don't do it this way, do it this way, don't think she's cheating on you. You hear from Dr. Ho. She just wants to be able to communicate so that she can enjoy you. So it's not like, don't get angry. Don't think, are you cheating on me? No. <laughs> she's not cheating on Where you. Where did you learn that's that from? What it, so, I, so what did you just say? I, so I, had, you just a, said? I mm -hmm. had a client and she went home to practice and called me the following day, said, Dr. Masman said, I'm not a prostitute. That I'm, I'm telling you from what you just said, that men will come out with something I like said, that. okay, give me your husband's number. He said, what are you going to do? I said, nothing, just, I want to talk to him. So I called the husband, I said, last night when you had sex, did you enjoy it with your wife? It's like, who is it? I said, your wife's counselor. <laughs> he said, yes. I said, why did you think she's cheating? And why did you call her a prostitute? Mm. I said, definitely you're cheating on her 
Mm, so, look at that. But mm -hmm. you are enjoying outside. You don't want her to enjoy. Well, I don't enjoy inside. See? At all. I said she's not cheating. I am actually a sex therapist. And exactly what I told her to do is what she did. Did you enjoy it or not? She said, oh, yeah, that was great. I said, continue to enjoy greatness. That's it. It's as mm. simple as that. It's not because it's cheating or she's cheating. No, she just wants you to be happy. She just wants to give you something great. It's a gift. Embrace it. Because she doesn't have to cheat. People um, can that's, work yeah. on themselves mm -hmm. and become better. Eh, but yeah. she has never done that before. She, yeah. she makes the she she's very boring. I said, why? Because now she's no more boring. What to mm -hmm. do, how to make you happy. Now she went to pay for it. She paid me. So embrace it and enjoy it and, and appreciate it. So you're very right. Some men will be like, oh, now she's cheating. Now she's yeah. mm -hmm. We want yeah, but do, Dr. Dr. Ho, I mean, uh, evangelist baby to answer that. You know, I deal with women too. I might not be a sex therapy, you know, but God has graced me, you know, this ministry that I speak to women. So I'm speaking from experience. Mm -hmm. So women that you have counseled, okay, maybe you should do this with her. But my husband said, was angry yeah. when I tried to correct him on the bed. Yeah. You understand? I'm not a therapist, but through speaking to other women like me, there's something that I picked. So that's what I said, for what she's saying, let's put that out there. She's not cheating. She just want the married bed to be better, you know, so that it won't be more, it won't continue to be boring, you know. So that's okay, why. okay, 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 okay. Yeah, <laughs> about all this mind blowing sex and sizzling and that we can speak in tongues. <laughs> mm, that's delicious. Oh, I like that. Ooh, I'm enjoying okay, that. Okay, mm, ma okay. ma ma we're so still on the show. No, no, that's the show. Yes. <laughs> and so Dr. O is on. If you are interested about that erectile dysfunction, she actually go to her page, Dr. Um, Dr. Olu Busola Olufemi, or Intimate Issues with Dr. O. She had a show last year. I think over 40,000 people watched it. If you go check it about erectile dysfunction, how to, um, you know, take care of yourself and different things there. You just scroll through. She has a show every Wednesday. I mean, we just have a one hour show, uh, but she does like two and a half hours and talks about, she actually shows you how to do it. And she doesn't get paid for that session on Wednesdays at three o'clock, I believe. And you can go on her. She also has audacious um, women um, group uh, page that you can go there for a woman who wants to get out of all the ruts that you're in, get up, get better. She has motivated me to get better, go back to school, get another degree, move forward, do all kinds of stuff, look slimmer. Mm -hmm. okay. mm. so, I already told you, Dr. Ho, I, got, I have to be your model. So I'm watching on it. I'm working on it. Yeah. Let me, let me show the uh, past, uh, Minister Jessica. Mm, mm, past, uh, <laughs> You're showing me. I'm showing you. Okay. No, because you say you want to be a mother and you lose weight. <laughs> Minister Jessica. Mm -hmm. You didn't yeah, say I'm nothing. Good. What are you going to do to Dr. Stanley when you get home today? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and today is Dr. Stanley's birthday. So you know. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The most All day long. Hot. All day long. So tonight. Mind blowing sex. Okay, sorry, we're still on the show. Come on, we're still on the show, ma'am. Okay, all right. Don't so be, don't be we kind now. We will move over. Sorry, right? Do we have? Time oh my to God, pray? it's six oh eight. <laughs> oh, do we have time to pray? We need to pray one prayer. Ah, at least yeah. one prayer. But Doctor, mm. please pray for our couples that have not been enjoying sex. Yeah. Who are in sex, sex marriages? Because mm. I did do, that's the only prayer we'll take. We're I did a pay, yeah, that's fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I went onto Wikipedia, and uh, what Wikipedia told me was so bad that at least 20% of uh, women, the news um, news magazine estimates that 15 to 20% of couples are in sexless relationship. That's marriage black. They are not having sex, and they're below 50. In the last one year, they've had nothing. Mm. And then those who are under 40 just have it one or two times a year. Mm. And so the, the marriage is not being fired up and it, it pushes them towards going outside the infidelity and then end up in divorce and all because they did not understand each other sexually. Um, mm. This your book is going to be a very good book for them. Um, 
uh, after this, we're going to go ahead and advertise it more, put it on all platforms, ask them to go get it and then consult you. But please pray for those ones that are right now, because I've spoken, like by Minister EMC said, I've traveled also, and I've spoken to a lot of women, pastors' wives too, yes. um, who are starved, sexually starved. Those are the worst. Those are really, the those worst. are the worst. The, the pastor's worst. wives are the ones that are really suffering, you know, because they, they will show another, there are two people or three or four. They are these in this ministry, but, you know, their home is affected, no sex, nothing. And they come out there to speak to the woman about having, enjoying your marriage. Your but marriage. they are not. So, you know, pastor's wives suffer most and it's yeah. unfortunate. <laughs> It's so yeah. unfortunate. Mm. So please, we need to, you're a pastor, so you know what it is. You've been through a domestic violence um, uh, marriage, so you know what it is, what um, the women are going through. And also men, too, that are not enjoying sex, because some of them really want to stay home and enjoy sex, but they, they, their wife is so frigid, she just says, switch off the lights and do what you have to do and get out. <laughs> mm. So we need to pray for those who are in sexless marriages and what we call marriage blank. That the Lord should deliver them. That's the only prayer point for today. Yeah. Um, yeah. the first deliverance, you know, I believe in prayer. I'm a I'm a woman of prayer. I pray for everything. But the truth is, even though you pray, people need to get help. Yes. When you have a problem, get help. Christians, especially, we don't believe in therapy, we don't believe in counseling. It's nothing to be ashamed of. Some of these things started a long time ago when we were growing up and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Go and get help. If your spouse doesn't want to go with you, go and get it for yourself. It's, it, it, when, when you having sex with your spouse, you're not doing that person a favor. You're doing yourself a favor. You should enjoy it. You're, you're not. It's not about satisfying him or giving him pleasure. If you're not getting pleasure if you're not enjoying it you're not living i don't even know how to explain that but just okay let me just do it for him do it for you so go and get help uh if you know you're the one with the issue go and get help get a counselor go for sex therapy go and talk to somebody free be free do something for yourself okay that's I mean, to even pray, we will pray, but go and get help. Don't just pray and, and, and believe God is going to come and do something <laughs> and just whine. So and I'm black, I'm black, I'm black. You walk towards yeah. it. When you want something, that's what I believe. Go walk towards it. Help yourself. Help yourself. And I mean, the, the money you use for makeup, go help yourself, Sha. That's all I can say. You know, it's part of the, it's part of the packaging. Help yourself. May God help us. Uh, Father, I pray for everyone watching and listening. Uh, this is about our homes. This is about our lives. Father, we just want to invite you into our homes. We want to invite you into our situations. Lord, I pray for every couple that may be going through one turbulence or the next, especially about this sex in marriage. Father, I pray, oh God, that you will give them the wisdom to be able to ask for help at the Amen. right places. And I pray, oh Amen. God, that you will help them. You will Amen. touch hearts in Jesus' Amen. mighty name. Amen. Cheating spouses, Lord, I pray that you will speak to them because Amen. we need to know that sharing our bodies up and down is not the solution to not mm. having great sex in our marriages. Mm. So just teach us. We just pray yes. that you teach us. We just pray that you will, you will make everything perfect because you made the marriage institution. It's supposed to be a happy place. It's supposed to be a, 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 a heaven, heaven on earth. Father, mm. let it be so for us in Jesus' mighty name. For Amen. every broken heart right now, I pray that you will touch them. I pray Amen. that you will mend it. I pray that Amen. you will heal them for every Amen. broken homes. Father, Amen. I pray that you will heal them and yes. and, and, and make everything good yes. in, your, Amen. in your sight. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name, we have Amen. 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 That's a yes, Wow, 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 wow. Mm. Bless you, great what you see today. <laughs> All mm. viewers, I hope that yeah, you have some great, great information today. Practice what you preach. That's all what I want to say. We need more, <laughs> we need oh, more yeah. pastors. Oh, yeah, Father's Day. Listen, we need more, more pastors to speak about this topic. There are many people suffering out there for no reason, just lack of knowledge. And I would say it is medicine. 
There's many things we haven't talked about it, but there's medication. This is part of God's plan. So mm. practice what you preach, and I'll mm -hmm. see you next week. And God bless you, woman of God. Amen. Wow, wow, Dr. O, thank you so much. This has been an informative show. My goodness, you know, it's, I mean, it's a thing that we don't talk about on the pulpit, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, with nobody, I, I, I don't remember growing up and my mom sitting me down to talk to me about sex. For right now, I talk to my children about it, you know, at, at are teenagers. So I tell them, they'll be like, hey, you as a baby, you're going to do it. I, I had you through sex. You know what I mean? So I, I let them know, because if you don't talk about it, they talk about it to them in school. Yes. So you can, nowadays they teach them in school. So parents, we need to open up. So what you said today, Dr. O is very informative. We thank you so much for coming on this show. Um, wow, God, my God, you know, I love you. I can't love you less. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I can't love you less, Dr. O. Thank you so much for coming. I'm glad. If you have any question, go ahead. Even though we're going to end the show, go ahead, type your question. We're going to send it to Dr. Ho and they're going to be answered too, okay? Okay. Thank you so much for coming. Thank Love you, Dr. O, for coming. I have learned the lesson. The Thank lesson you for I have having me. <laughs> the lesson I've learned today is I need you. Oh, my. God. You need me. Dr. Yes. O, do you have yes. your word? Please pray for her. <laughs> <laughs> We're all a part of the family. So uh, I'll be pointing to the bedroom. I need you. Yes. You need me. Sing it. Hallelujah. Sing it. Oh my God. Did I not tell you not to do that? <laughs> you yes. Take it. Take it. Yes, Take Lord. It. Yes, Lord. Oh my yes. God. Okay. Thank you for watching our show. <laughs> <laughs> I hope we were able to uh, inform you a little bit. Please go to our page, The Woman of God Show, and go and look for the, pay, the Dr. O album, and you can connect with us. She's on Facebook every Wednesday at 3 o'clock talking about one topic or the other, and she goes to the roots, the nitty-gritty. We're trying to hold her down on this show. Cause yeah, because this is The Woman of God Show. <laughs> yeah, The Woman of God Show. We have to talk godly. But if you want to get to the heavenly Jerusalem, Oh she will show goodness. you the way so that you can mm. stop singing ancient and modern and start singing contemporary. <laughs> yes, 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 Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. And anyway, so see you next week. Father, I pray for your daughter. <laughs> Let her calm down. <laughs> Take it, double portion. Yes. Hallelujah. <laughs> Not with that. <laughs> Oh my God! Dr. 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 We'll see you tonight in the upper room. Good night. Oh, yes. Good night. Oh, in the, in, you know, in the upper room, and fire always come down in the upper room. Oh, fire. <laughs> Woo! Sizzling. Mind blowing. Oh, good night, everybody. We love you. Tonight. Bye. See you next time.